All right. What's up, everybody? Going live on a Monday night again. This back-to-back-to-back is nuts with the Elite Series. Uh, Yes, I copied the text from the last time I did a Chickamauga video to this one, and then I now updated it to be the second-to-last fantasy fishing event of the 2020. Good catch, Roger. <clears throat> all right, so all things fancy fishing tonight. Let a few people get in here um, and uh, get the ball rolling. So, other than that, just another Monday night after a weekend and a tournament. Uh, we'll get into fantasy fishing here in a few minutes. Watch a few people get in and uh, answer a few questions. Uh, I don't know if Coy's hanging out. Maybe he can give his uh, his early insight since our articles are not yet posted to Bassmaster. You can get the the scoop before they actually drop. But uh, it's been a it's been an interesting uh, couple weeks on the Elite Series. The Southern Swing is definitely uh, shooken up the AOI, and I feel like it's shaken up some people's uh, fantasy fishing rosters as well. As far as that goes, it's been uh, hard to predict who's going to do well, and uh, definitely had a couple of mediocre finishes on Gunnersville and uh, Santee Cooper. So I need to to rebound here and finish strong on Chickamauga and Lake Fork. Uh, dropped from kind of that 95% down to about 90, just under 92% now. So not the greatest, but uh, haven't fallen, you know, completely out of it. But uh, definitely would have to be a miracle to to move up towards the top now with two events to go. But still, you know, 92%, I think I get to keep my pundit status. Uh, So um, how did everybody else do? Uh, on these events, I'd be interested to hear how the rest of you fared uh, in the last two Southern Swing events. Uh, how are, and then uh, just how's your your fall fishing been? Is it, uh, is it starting to pick up for everybody? Coy, I am almost caught you. I've picked up a few more points again. You are now only six points ahead of me with two events to go. It's a virtual tie, my friend. But uh, otherwise, I don't know. Hopefully everybody's not watching Monday Night Football and they're ready to talk some fancy fish in the chat. It's kind of quiet for having 10 people in here. Submission to see who's all joined in. Love to hear from you in the chat. Otherwise, if it's just me going over my lineup, so it'll be a quick and uh, tidy stream and podcast tonight. Uh, while we're waiting, if you guys uh, haven't been keeping up, I do drop these in the audio format on in podcasts as well. So if you'd rather catch these in a non-YouTube format, on a, you know, just listen to it on your smartphone or wherever that may be while you're working or walking, working out, whatever you do when you're not smashing YouTube videos, <clears throat> just uh, look at the links down below in the description and the pinned comment, either in any of the previous live streams or this one once the replay goes up tomorrow. So otherwise you can search Hella Bass Podcast, Bass Fishing, and uh, you should be able to find it there as well. So just another great way to, to download the content. Um, so just like to give that option. As always, the uh, Fantasy Fishing is brought to you by Bass Utopia and OmniaFishing.com. Uh, great. <clears throat> bass Utopia is a great place to get content uh, on bass fishing techniques uh, how to's, how to catch more bass, uh, you know, similar to wired to fish. Um, <clears throat> a lot of content from people like Patrick Walters and Seth Fighter there and uh, several other anglers worth checking out. And then Omni Fishing is a great place to buy some of your tackle. Um, great customer service, definitely worth checking out. And you can use code richlinger in 15 to save yourself 15%. And those links are down below right now as well. Um <clears throat> Yeah, Bob says he's had trouble predicting as well. Currently at 93.8%, so just a little few percentage points ahead of me. So he has done better than myself the last two events probably. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, it's still fun. Here's the code for Omnia Fishing. I'll put that in there in case anybody wants to tackle that later after the stream to see what they got. But if there's not any other questions or Coy doesn't want to defend himself and how had he slipping to me, 
Um, <clears throat> we'll get into it. Here's an interesting question, Richard Harding. If you pick a low percentage guy, do you gain more points? No, you do not. It's You get the same amount of points, but if you have a guy, an angler that's at 5% and he does super well, that means you're gaining points on 95% of the field uh, for that bucket. So, um, so the, the – Potential is to make up ground on more people by picking lower percentage anglers. But on the flip side, if he doesn't do well, that means you're falling behind potential 95% of the picks. So it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't. Really, it's all about amassing the most points possible. Um, I mean, if you go with the highest percentage anglers in every single bucket, you could have a really good score, but that means – Everybody else is going to have a really good score as well. So uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with going a little bit of chalk, but you need to mix in a few anglers that aren't the absolute most percentage if you're really going to gain any ground and, and kind of separate yourself, if that makes sense. Hope that answers your question, Mr. Harding. <clears throat> Landon asks, how did the rush tourney go? Um, well, you, there will be a video Wednesday. Do you really want me to spoil it for you before Wednesday? Um, we did take home some prizes. I'll tell you that. It wasn't a bum. It wasn't a bust. We did okay. Uh, why don't we wait for the video to see how it went? Then that won't be uh, won't spoil it for you. Um, but some good fish catches. Uh, I think there'll be a pretty good video coming. Um, I think it'll be worth worth watching for sure. Uh, ball fishing is one of my favorite times to fish. Um, I can tell you there was some fish caught on jigs. There was some frogfish. Um, so sounds pretty good. Ooh, that's rough, Doug. Yeah. It's just like some of these anglers that have been uh, taking a beating in AOI. Uh, some of us fantasy players, uh, took a beating as well. So, um, it's been, uh, tumultuous to say the least, uh, trying to pick fantasy fishing, <clears throat> but two events to go. So I feel like, um, so Bob says this week I leaned heavily on the Tennessee guys doing well. Um, do I think buddy girls can figure them out in the fall? We will cover that very soon, but yeah, I do. I think he, buddy doesn't fish. I mean, he fishes all year round. Um, I don't think he hunts a whole lot. So I'm sure he's been out on Chickamauga in October before. So I think he'll do well. <clears throat> Um, so I think, you know, from a strategy standpoint now with only two events left, you have to decide where am I at? If you're above 95%, maybe you still have a shot of, you know, in the top prizes for the overall for the year. If you're not above 95%, I think you're probably that ship has sailed. So now time to maybe take some calculated risks and, you know, you're, you're probably best chances to try to to finish in the top win or finish in the top five or 10 or whatever many prizes they give out um, <clears throat> for a particular event now. So I would not necessarily take everybody that's 1%, but I would say you might want to take a little more risk than normal if your goal is to win some prizes and try to do that on an event basis. If you're above 95 from your high 90s, then I'd still play it smart and uh, just do what you keep on doing and hopefully climb a little bit in the last uh, couple of events. So that's my overall strategy advice for fantasy fishing. So <clears throat> yeah. So if you're like uh Lono Lenoke Bells, I have yeah. Uh <clears throat> Bassaholic Bell here, he's ranked 885 at 97.6%. So if you're him, I say keep doing what you've been doing. Uh, and just make that slow climb. I don't think it's time to uh, get too risky at this point. Uh, you still got a shot, <clears throat> especially as tough as things have been. Some of these top players could easily have a seven, 800 point event. And, uh, that would open the door for a lot of players to, to move up. If you guys can put together a good roster. <clears throat> so Chickamauga, this is kind of funny. Like this is the third time I have wrote an article, wrote an article for this tournament for fantasy fishing. And I feel like this week it actually will happen. Uh, this is the second video in the third article um, uh, for this. So Ryan here, he's showing off. 
Crank 234. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing, bud. You still got a shot for sure. Um, but uh, and so I've definitely – the roster has changed because we had a – I believe it was supposed to be back-to-back with the St. John's, so it would have been, what, late February, early March. And then we had one that was supposed to be just after the Classic that got rescheduled because of – so the first one was because of floods, second one because of COVID, and now we're finally here uh, in October. So – I think the weights, you know, potentially those first two tournaments, both hundred pounds would have been, you know, potentially there. Um, now I don't think that's going to happen, but I still think <clears throat> there's some, some pretty good opportunity for some, some big bags and they still catch 10 pounders about all year. Um, so my team, I sit right there. So, I'm through right around 3000 at just under 90%. So <clears throat> I was up maybe like 13, 14, 1500 coming into these last two tournaments, right in that 94, 95% and uh, very mediocre at uh, Gunnersville and Santee Cooper. So uh, not embarrassing, but uh, not, we were trending up all year, slowly climbing, slowly climbing every event. And now we've started slowly slipping the last couple of events. So, <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, so Chickamauga, um, I expect it to be kind of the tale of two things. There's going to be anglers that are going to do well basically concentrating on grass, uh, you know, whether that's swim jigging, chatter baits, punching, frogging, flipping, that kind of stuff. Um, or there's going to be kind of an offshore, but I don't think it's going to be like offshore ledge, but I think offshore, you know, shallow to mid-range, humps, shoals, bars, shell beds, that type of stuff, current based things like that, <clears throat> I think will be the two primary players. And I do think there's potential for some, I don't know how many bridges there are on Chickamauga, but I think that type of thing, that current based funnel neck down areas could play on Chickamauga as well. <clears throat> Doug says, I like Welcher. Can't argue with you there. So I'm going to get into my picks. Um, So we'll start at the bottom, bucket D, or bucket E, sorry. Um, so actually, the last time we did this, my pick for bucket E was Bill Weiler. And I have, I think he still belongs there. Um, has some decent amount of experience on Chickamauga in some opens and, and that type of stuff. His cash and checks done fairly well. A lot of those have been early in the year, but I feel like, you know, knowing about the lake, bucket E, um, I think he's got okay percentages. He knows the lake. I think his likeliness to weigh just solid bags for this event. Um, plus he made a day three cut at Gunnersville, which this is like some people say, you know, Gunnersville little brother. Um, a lot of positive indicators for Bill this week. So I really like Weidler um, for Bucket E. Be interesting to see who you, who you guys take. Leave me a comment down in there in the stream. Love to hear what you guys are thinking for Bucket E. Obviously, most of the anglers in bucket E are struggling this year, or they wouldn't be in bucket E. Um, plus, Wyler's got a win this year, which I think, you know, pads the pocketbook, lets you fish a little more free, and I think uh, that all bodes well for him at uh, Chickamauga. I think if you're looking for a Wiley vet, John Cruz, believe it or not, made his first cut since the Classic. He had a really good St. John's tournament, had a really good Classic, both top tens, and then he basically went uh, – uh, you don't go checklist, but he didn't make a day three cut the rest of the season, which is super uncharacteristic for John Cruz. He ended up fishing 40th at uh, Santee Cooper. He was actually doing better than that, but he only weighed one fish on day three. Um, so, you know, maybe this is where he, his turning point, and he gets back on the upswing, back to his normal self, and you can cash in by that. So he is pretty heavily owned in the percentage, uh, but I think John Cruz is a pretty interesting pick for Bucket E. So I like Weidler, and I like Cruz in Bucket E. Um, so Crowley, uh, who is, uh, the highest percentage I've seen in the live viewership agrees with my Wilder pick. So maybe that's good for me. <clears throat> um, solid rock outdoors says he's got uh, Klaus, Logan, Jockamson, Brandon card, and Welcher. I think that's decent. Those all make a decent amount of sense. Um, Klaus is about as local as it gets for Chickamauga, <clears throat> but, uh, his, his results have been there a little mixed, but. Hey, any, any of these guys can catch them. So I, I think that's a very viable lineup you got there. 
<clears throat> Doug says, uh, live a C for E. E kills me every time. Well, if you've been picking Lee, that might be part of the reason because he's had some just tough luck and misfortune. Like he got stuck on a stump uh, last week at Santee and didn't weigh in his fish. So um, that's just a bad luck. He had some fish and just having some fish on Santee would have been quite a few points. So um, that's a tough one. But uh, I definitely – I don't think there's any way I don't pick Lee Livesey at Lake Fork uh, next time. But so, <clears throat> so moving on, bucket D. Uh, I, you know, I, I I struggled to pick between Kyle Monty and Derek Hudnall last week. And I actually put Derek Hudnall as my pick in my article and Monty as my backup. And then when I finalized my lineup, I switched them and I definitely should have took Hudnall because I believe he made the final day and Monty had two small limits that just missed my spot. So, um, but looking back at it, uh, I still think Kyle's a good fit here. He's a really low percentage owned and he's at like less than one percent he had like a 21st place finish in a 2017 bass open was actually was earlier in the year but <clears throat> he shows that he can catch him on chickamauga he knows a little bit about the lake um and last year he had a top five on 10 killer and i feel like some of that stuff may transfer i look at what carl jockamson did in october last year what he's doing this year in october and i feel like monty kyle monty has the right mindset the right skills for this fall fishing so that's why i'm going to take the gamble and go for a super low percentage guy in bucket d to hopefully pay off <clears throat> uh, my local angle if you're looking for something maybe a little more safe uh skylar hamilton lives about 90 minutes away from chickamauga on the one end um so he should have a decent tournament he did pretty well in the bass fest tournament in 2014 which i believe was like a summertime july tournament and uh so, you know, I think he has a little bit of knowledge about the lake in that section of the Tennessee River. So I think he's a fairly high owned percentage, but I think he's a guy to consider for bucket D as well. Um, Ryan Crowley has Hamilton. Sycamore, we'll catch you later. Um, you can always catch the replay if you want, bud. Um, so that's my bucket D. I know I'm taking a little bit of a risk, but like I said before, where I'm at, I need to take some calculated risks. I'm definitely not going all dark horses. But there's I need to mix it up. I can't go way chalk or just don't have a chance to win or make up any uh, legitimate ground. And uh, it's all about beating Koi at this point. So I'm coming for you, Koi. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I do think Bucket D was one of the trickier uh, buckets to pick for sure. I can't argue with there. Oh, let's see. Bucket C. All right. So here, I was an angler that I don't necessarily like love to pick he's not one of my favorites um but <clears throat> and again not necessarily guys that are having a great year outside of winning the bassmaster classic but hank cherry you know coming off of what i would call for him a disastrous northern swing where i don't think he barely made a cut if he did um but if you look at his win at the classic and then he had three events after that which were ufala santi cooper and gunnersville he basically averaged a 20th place finish in those three events. So if you look at the classic on and then kind of wipe out that northern swing, uh, Cherry actually looks pretty good. Um, so I think he's well suited. His, you know, jerk bait, you know, jigs around dock, that kind of stuff plays well this time of year in the fall transition. So I think he's a good pick. And he's, you know, for a guy that's won the classic and has been around and a veteran, he's a pretty low percentage owned. Um, so that's my bucket C pick, um, where I'm looking to make up a little ground. I think that's a pretty decent pick <clears throat> and obviously winning, uh, at Gunnersville and then having another decent finish at Gunnersville and this all being on this Tennessee river, it feels like he's got something kind of figured out just, you know, to be in the ballpark on, on, uh, Chickamauga. Um, so if you're looking for a big bait backup pick, <clears throat> well, Carl Jackson, it's listed as Frisco, Texas on his fantasy profile. He lives now, uh, has a home on the shores or near the shores of Chickamauga. He moved to that Chattanooga area of Tennessee. He settled down after he got married. They found a house there. Uh, he chose that because he had spent a lot of time fun fishing at Chickamauga over the years. 
developed a kinship, a bond with the lake. I know he got his personal best, I believe, on a glide bait uh, last year, maybe. And uh, so I think that's a lot of reasons to pick him. Uh, I think the one negative or the risky part is that he does love the big baits and he believes he can catch him probably at times on Chickamauga. So as long as he doesn't fall trapped to that or get married to that uh, in this tournament, I think he could be good on Chickamauga. Um, plus he's fished well at 10 killer. He had a nice finish at Gunnersville. I mean, last year he won in October. So, and then, you know, almost won on Sandy Cooper. So it feels like he's got this late September, early October fishing thing in the South figured out. So I think uh, Carl's a really good pick in bucket C. Let's see what, uh, what everybody else thinks. Um, Ryan says he took Cox. Yeah. So that was the big thing. I think John Cox is now like, he just slipped to be the top angler in bucket C, which is a super tempting pick um, because Chickamauga has been, you know, he's bankrolled uh, and almost made a career fishing Chickamauga. He's won several opens. I think he's won some FLW events. I mean, he's been dominant, but most of those tournaments have been March, April, maybe June. Um, so or maybe not quite that May, you know, March, April, May. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays in the fall. And he does not, had not come off. I mean, he's had pretty two rough tournaments on Gunnersville and Sandy Cooper, which makes me want to shy away from John Cox a little bit. So there's a lot of data points in history that suggest that Cox should be really good on Chickamauga. And there's a lot of recent history of late summer, early fall fishing in the South that has not gone well uh, for John Cox. But I mean, he did win an FLA Cup um, on Wheeler, which is a TVA lake in August or September. So it's just a matter if he can find those fish that he likes to fish uh, or not. So it'll be really interesting and uh, super high percentage owned though. So that's part of the reason I kind of shied away from Cox. But if I was in the top 2% like Ryan, I might think harder about taking somebody like Cox. So <clears throat> yeah, I think it is hard to pick against Cox, but uh, I just, for me, I don't feel super great about him. I had him picked when it was, earlier in the year for sure, 100% locked in on him. I'm just a little hesitant for this late deal, This, especially the way the last two tournaments have went. I'm not feeling the vibe, but I would not be shocked at all to see him do well. <clears throat> yeah, I think Solid Rock Outdoors, I think you're right on. Like riding the uh, the Carl momentum is a good, good strategy right now, and uh, I see no reason if he's been working for you lately, no reason to stray away from that uh, this week. All right, let's talk Bucket B. We'll keep rolling. Bucket B, uh, so this is where we have the local of all locals and Buddy Gross and Bucket B. Uh, so not exactly a big risk. Uh, like I said, you don't necessarily need all risks. Uh, sometimes you need a little chalk. And I'm willing to go chalk, chalk, chalk with Buddy Gross and Bucket B. Uh, I mean, when you have Lake Chickamauga as your title boat sponsor wrap, you should do well on that lake. I feel like he's going to probably commit to that offshore kind of current base shoal shell bed type stuff. <clears throat> and I think you'll put the time in and uh, I expect him to do well. I mean, uh, I would put my money on it. He'd be the odds on favorite if, if we were in Vegas. And I think uh, he'd be where the smart money is for bucket B dark horse. Um, I think if you're looking for a really kind of a wild card, low percentage guy, somebody that probably not many people are going to pick, I would look at Luke Palmer. He's done, he finished third place at Gunnersville, which I think translates to here. Um, cash to check, I believe, at Santee Cooper. <clears throat> um, and I think whatever's been working recently uh, for the Oki, uh, I think is going to carry over to Chickamauga this week. So I don't know if he's been throwing spinner baits or fishing shallow or whatever he's been doing. I think uh, if you want somebody a little bit off the radar, kind of a dark horse pick, I think Luke Palmer could be a really strong pick um, if you're willing to take the gamble in bucket B. Uh, and I think there's several other good picks in bucket B too. I think Lester's in that bucket, and I think uh, Stetson Blaylock. Those are the two other anglers, um, or maybe they're in A. Lester and Blaylock. Um, I think are really strong picks. Uh, those were two that I really considered. Um, <clears throat> Ryan says he's going Shryock. That's where he's going to take his risk. Um, yeah, I can see that. 
uh, if the frog and flip and bite goes, I think uh, Hunter could be good. Yeah, Arier Otten, I can see that. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I wasn't getting that vibe to be real strong, but there's no reason they couldn't catch him. Uh, Solid Rocks says he's taking Brandon Card, Tennessee guy, <clears throat> who definitely loves that offshore, that cranking, that fishing deep. That could be really strong this week at, uh, at uh, Chickamauga. I should tell you one thing to remember. This tournament starts on Friday this week, so there's a travel day today. So everybody should have made their way from Santee Cooper, got there today, got set up. The official practice starts tomorrow. So they get Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday practice, and the tournament goes Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and a championship Monday, which I love as a person that uh, spends most of his workday on the computer. I can keep an eye on that all day on Monday. So pretty jazzed about that. So bucket A, <clears throat> I think I got a good sleeper pick for you guys here. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to keep riding the Welcher train. Uh, I kind of said I was going to do that from Gunnersville on, and I have no reason to sway off that now. Uh, Welcher used to live up by Chickamauga, fished a ton of team tournaments, fished Opens, fished Toyota Series, fished BFLs, um, has done pretty well in all of those. Um, and I think he's just fishing smart right now. He's fishing well. He's making the most of his opportunities. Um, you know, if he needs to run up the river – and do that, he do well. He can fish Lower Lake. He, he, he's very, very familiar with Chickamauga. I mean, he, you know, probably isn't as dialed in in the offshore game, but that shallow run and gun, running pattern on Chickamauga, he's very dialed into that. So, um, if you don't believe me, you can go check out Welcher's YouTube channel, search Chickamauga, and you'll see that he spent plenty of time on that body of water. Now, for the sleeper pick, <clears throat> I think Austin Felix is a sneaky pick. Um, he had a really good finish there. I believe a top 10 the last time they had an open there, which was a summer tournament, I believe a June. So like a ledge style tournament. Um, and he recently got the nickname, the sleepy assassin from Dave Mercer, uh, and finished, I believe fourth, uh, at Santee Cooper, um, has made every day three cut the entire season outside of the St. John's river, which was rough on a lot of people. And he's consistently just doing really well cashing checks uh, and putting good tournaments together. He's a wizard <clears throat> with his Lawrence Electronics, which I think will pay off super big this week at uh, Chickamauga. And, you know, super quietly has found himself tied with Seth Fighter for fifth place in the OI points. So a lot of reasons to like Austin Felix from Minnesota uh, this week at Chickamauga. So if you want somebody a little bit more off the radar – I do like uh, Austin Felix this week. Another guy that's been fishing super well, a Tennessee angler, David Mullins. Loves to crank. Seems to be doing a lot of things right this year, having his definitely his best year on the Elite Series by far. And uh, I think this really fits his strength uh, as well. So I think a lot of interesting guys to look at in bucket A. <clears throat> Shadow, you're late, but the visor is still here for you. Uh, yeah. I think I just talked about Mullins, uh, 100%. I think that's a good pick. If, if, if you've been picking Mullins and he's been paying off for you, and I see no reason not to stick with him. Uh, 100%, I'm, I'm riding the Welcher train. Um, let's just maybe open up the uh, – let's just take a look here. So so bucket A, uh, percentage-wise – you know, Mullins is a fairly high percentage. I think, you know, that's makes sense. He's uh, he's doing really well this year. It should fit his strength. He's definitely got experience on it. Um, I definitely like him probably more than Corey Johnson. Uh, if there's a good grass flipping bite, Seth Fighter could be deadly on there. I just don't know how good the grass is on Chickamauga this year. Um, Otherwise, you know, Wentland, Canterbury, you can see those guys doing well. I talked about Austin Felix. Um, there's a lot of anglers, Clint Davis, Patrick Walters. I mean, Bucket A always has a ton of talent. So I think there's a lot of good candidates that definitely have the potential to do really strong in this tournament. Um, Bucket B, yeah, Lester and, and Blaylock. I would take a hard look at those guys if you really don't like that 42% owned of Buddy Gross. Um, <clears throat> but otherwise, I think – yeah, I mean, Zeldane, Card, Heron, if the grass bite goes. Uh, I talked about Luke Palmer. So a lot of interesting picks there. 
Um, and bucket C, I think Cox, Cherry. Um, those are the ones. Who else did I? Who's my dark horse in? Uh, oh yeah, I mean my backup, Carl. I think really strong here. I mean maybe Bill Lowen. He finally had a, a good finish on Santee Cooper. A lot of these other guys could do well. I mean Bob Downey did, uh, won an open last year in the fall. I could see him finding some flipping fish. Did well at Gunnersville. Um, you know, it's about time for Swindle to have a big tournament. Could be here. Sullivan, I could see some of the stuff he did at Gunnersville transferring to here. Yeah, I don't know who else sticks out to me. Hanselman is always a threat, <clears throat> but he just hasn't really seen to be putting it together lately. Um, so, yeah, I don't know who else is there to look at in bucket E. I think Cruz, Widler, Livesey, Klaus, I think people have got that kind of dialed in. Um, I mean, De Palma feels like a better angler than Bucket E. He should be having a good tournament eventually. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of the, the gamut of things in uh, in fantasy fishing. I don't know who else has got. All right, let's see here. So, Shadow says 40% of his picks are in the top 10. So, that means you had two picks in the top 10. So, solid. Um, which was uh, one more or two more than I had. I think I had Walters and Welcher finish well, and the other three weren't so good. So, so that's fantasy picks for Chickamauga. I don't know what else you guys want to talk about. If you guys got any questions, we can answer them. Otherwise, we'll wrap up this stream a little bit early, nice and tidy from Monday night. Um, <clears throat> Michael Minnan says he's staying away from traditional Chickamauga guys like Gross and Lester. Uh, you think the fall transition hurts the logo? Interesting. It could be true. Um, it is definitely a, a sound strategy potentially. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if Buddy Gross is local enough to make it an advantage or not, uh, but we'll find out by Monday for sure. Lunkers with Lucas says, I sucked at Santee Cooper. I was pretty pedestrian as well, so I feel you there. Um, I took Welcher in A. Um, I can flash my picks here again real quick. Uh, just recap on Welcher, Gross, Cherry, Monty, Weidler uh, are my picks for Chickamauga. And I think tiebreaker-wise, uh, I'm putting it between the two tournaments we just had at uh, 68 pounds, four ounces. I looked at a BFL super tournament that happened just about a month ago and it took 28 pounds for 10 fish for two days, which is not very good. I expect it to be slightly better than that, but I think there were several anglers in the top 10 of that BFL super tournament that did not weigh in 10 fish in two days. So a month ago, it was really tough. Hopefully it's starting to pick back up. <clears throat> Otherwise, we could be filling a lot of time on Chickamauga uh, on Bass Live. Thanks, Lunkers. Um, so, yeah, last call for a few questions, whether it be fantasy fishing or fall fishing or general fishing questions. We can hang on for a few minutes um, and see what everybody's got. And see there's 20-some people in the live chat. So if you got questions, now is the time. Um, Otherwise, this weekend I picked up a new Arsenal hat, which I'm trying to determine if we should customize this or not. I'm trying to determine if this how this patch placement would work in a custom visor. So tune in. It might become a visor. All right. Well, I think that will be a wrap since nobody's got any more questions. Uh, we are going to wrap the stream up. I do have a tournament video coming out Wednesday night. If you're new to the channel, um, love you to subscribe, uh, leave a comment, and uh, let me know what you guys would like to see uh, uh, coming up. And I'll definitely try to make content tailored to what you want to see. Um, <clears throat> a couple questions coming in. 
uh, Destin and Marion. Yeah, I, I was really surprised. I mean, he's a good angler, and all these guys can catch him. It was good to see him have a really good tournament at uh, Santee Cooper. Um, obviously, he did okay at St. John's. He did fairly well in the Northern Swing. Um, but it was good to see him grind out uh, a solid tournament at Santee Cooper and make the final day. So um, I'm pretty sure when I interviewed him in my live stream a while back, we talked about this, that I'm pretty sure he pre-scouted Chickamauga a little bit. So I know if he spent some time at least graphing around, looking at the lake. So I think, you know, doing that kind of stuff, if you do it smartly, definitely helps you as far as when you start to find something in your official practice that you can hopefully duplicate it and run around and find more of it in, in the rest of the lake. So, um, I think Destin to Marion is an up and coming angler. He's definitely still learning some things. I think he's still learning some things about the mid South. I think he knows quite a bit about Northern fishing and knows a decent about, about Florida because of his guiding. And I think he's just kind of filling in that gap and rounding out his game. And I, and I expect him to, to keep getting better. Um, how confident am I going to Pickwick? Um, I think reasonably confident. Uh, I like the fact that it's a, a river type system, Pickwick, more so than a lot of uh, lakes down south and even more, probably one of the more rivery TVA, I think. Uh, and it has a fair amount of grass, uh, current, smallies, spots, largemouth, all play. I think my experience on the Mississippi River will, will serve me well to understand what the fish are doing in the current, how to read a current seam, what an eddy looks like, how they set up. Um, so I don't, I feel pretty good. I feel like, uh, it's the, should be the kind of fishing I like to do. Uh, I definitely like fishing in the fall, covered water, power fishing. Um, so I feel good. I, I like, uh, I like my chances down at Pickwick. I mean, I'm excited about Pickwick. How's that? Um, <clears throat> am I confident in Cherry? Um, I think Cherry's a good angler. I don't vibe with him. Like he doesn't like attract me as a fan, like, some anglers you connect with on a fan basis where you really like to pull for them. I don't find myself pulling for Hank Cherry a lot. Uh, I'm sure he's a super good dude. I just, I don't know, for whatever reason, uh, he's not a guy that like calls to me. Um, <clears throat> but I think just looking at the data, you know, like I said, when I was covering it earlier, that if you look at the classic win and then the other three Southern tournaments of Eufaula, Gunnersville, and Sandy Cooper, he's averaging a 20th place finish and then a win in the classic on the Southern reservoirs. I think that both well. And, uh, he had a, a disastrous Northern swing, but I think if you cut that out, take that out, ex extract that from the data set, uh, Hank Cherry has been fishing pretty well. And I think he's uh, poised to do pretty well. Okay. Didn't want his bait shown. Okay. Uh, yeah. Pickwick's the best TV lake for numbers. You'll love it. Yeah. I'm excited to get down there. Um, yeah, you pull for Chris Grow. I mean, Chris Grow's a, a likable guy. Uh, I just don't know if he's a, uh, a fantasy fishing stalwart, if that makes sense. <clears throat> uh, and so I, I like Summerall a little better than Chris Grow. Um, but Caleb was much more consistent last year and he's a little more up and down this year. And I've picked him a few times and it hasn't worked well. Um, you say Brandon at Chick. Are we talking Brandon Card or Brandon Polnick? <laughs> um, I actually probably like Brandon Card a little better than Polnick, but I think they both have the potential to do well. But who doesn't like a good flipper? Um, it'll be interesting to see. I know talking to Buddy or listening to Buddy Gross on the Bassmaster Radio podcast, he talked about how the lower end of the lake doesn't have nearly as much grass as it normally does, and there's actually more grass on the upper end of the lake on Chickamauga. So I don't know how that will affect the grass slippers on Chickamauga. So that's just a tidbit to consider for your fantasy fishing lineup. <clears throat> but, all right, we're going to wrap it up. I appreciate all the questions. If you think of something I didn't answer, drop a comment below. I'll respond in the comments or address it on a future live stream. I appreciate all of you uh, hanging in here. Uh, oh, Martin. Interrupting my flow. I'm fishing the Bass Nation National Championship in middle of November on Pickwick, Martin. Uh, yeah, thanks for the well wishes on Pickwick. Uh, wrapping things up here, make sure you guys uh, spread the word. It really helps me out. I can do more content, do more live streams, invest more in the channel if you'll share this out uh, and let your buddies know. And uh, as always, here to help you catch more bass and suck less at fantasy fishing. Until next time, uh, tight lines, and we'll catch you guys later.